Now that the weather's improved, I'm looking for any excuse to get outside. This week is absolutely glorious. It's something like 23 degrees today. And I went out first thing and did a couple of errands, but this afternoon after lunch, like, this weather's too good to miss. I can't be stuck indoors all day. So I decided to go and do a bit of window shopping because there's not much else to do in the town really. And I wanted to get out and walk around. So I thought I'd go and have a little window shop and look for shoes because I've talked recently about how I need a new pair of trainers. I need a new pair of walking boots. Um, last year I took up the 10,000 steps a day challenge and destroyed my feet. Um, I stopped doing it about three or four months ago and although my feet are getting better I still have a lot of pain so I get heel pain and um, I get like a burning sensation on the inside and the underside of my big toe and pressure points on the outside. I generally wear wide fit shoes because they're more comfortable um, but I've for a long long time I've been buying like second hand shoes and trying to keep the bills down so my last pair of trainers I think were like nine quid my last pair of walking boots were 12 quid and they weren't heavily worn they were very lightly worn they were like worn a few times and then put to the back of the cupboard but because I have these issues with my feet now I find that if I go out and walk for too long I just end up in too much pain it's too uncomfortable and how can you enjoy going out on a long hike if you know you're in pain after half an hour um, so I went for a little wander around because we do have some specialised shoe shops. We have Foot Asylum, we have a, a JD Sports, I think there's a Clark's. And the prices are just, even for me, you know, I could just say, to hell with it, I'm going to buy the best pair of shoes I can get. And it wouldn't put me in desperate straits, but I don't want to pay over £100 for a pair of shoes. And I'm really funny about shoes as well, so I tend to find it... I hate breaking in new shoes, I find them uncomfortable, they tend to rub and I need to try them on, wear them, see what they're like. So it's no good me trying to buy stuff online because you don't know what you're going to get. So I had a look in some of these shops and the prices were just mm, too much for what they were. And then I ended up in TK Maxx, which I've never bought a pair of shoes from TK Maxx, it's all odd, odd pairs, odd sizes it's just a jumble it's like a sales day but I had a look and I went and looked because I'm a size seven to seven and a half I went and had a look on the rail and there's not that many they don't have that many size sevens and there was this pair of trainers there and they're a good brand and I bought them so welcome to my first pair of sketches Sketches, they're, they're an expensive brand in my mind, but they are also a good brand in my mind. So I walked around to the shop for about 10 minutes in these thinking, do I, don't I? They've got a memory foam base on them, so they're squishy, so they do feel soft. Um, they're a size 7, they're not a tight fit, uh, they're a fabric top, so they're not too, um, like too restrictive. They're called Sketches Air Cooled Goga Mat. And I spent ages just sitting there thinking, is this what I want? Do I want to do this? And then I looked online and looked at the similar prices if, you, if I bought direct from Sketches. And these are pretty bargain. This is, this is clearance sale, as most of TK Maxx is, I think. And these were £29.99. They are brand new. They were the only pair there. They were the only pair of um, proper like memory foam style trainers uh, or running shoes that I could find in my size. Um, there were other trainers and things but they weren't like specialised ones and I've, I've always wanted a pair of sketches because they're supposed to be really good. So don't ever say I don't treat myself. £29.99 for a brand new pair of memory foam sketches. Let's see how we get on with these. Okay, so now I can stop wearing other trainers. What I could do for some of the other shoes that I wear 
is I could buy some memory foam inserts, you can get those. Uh, that might help for some of the other ordinary shoes that I wear and you can get those pretty cheaply. So for like standard um, little lace up shoes, I mean I don't wear heels and stuff, it would only be flats. I could get some memory foam inserts, I think that might be a good idea. So there we are, I have bought a pair of sketches, my first pair, and at a pretty good price I think actually. Now I need to just focus on getting a decent pair of walking boots. Um, more than anything I need them to be waterproof because the pairs that I have aren't. I do have a pair of walking boots which I haven't worn very much. Um, and I might get the memory foam inserts for those, but there we are. That's my first update of this new new vlog. I bought myself something that didn't break the bank. This morning I woke up to a notification that I'd been paid for the medical trial that I tried to get in on. So I did three hours for the first screening, I did an hour for a follow-up blood test and then I think it was about five hours or something for the day where I went in to have the bronchoscopy and then that didn't happen because I nearly passed out waiting to go in. <clears throat> so I think I did the equivalent of about 10 hours in all for that and they've paid me £145 so that's pretty good. I think it works out at a, a round about £14 an hour which isn't bad for sitting around just having needles stuck in your arms. So that's that paid for so now I'm just going to wait and see if any other um, trials come up. I've got the whole of the rest of the year so it could be a while before anything shows up. It'll probably be at least a few months before I get another notification. But uh, that was pretty good. I can do that. Um, update on the neighbour situation. Well, it's not really an update. So it's been several days and nobody has been round at all. There's been no noise, no nothing. It's really weird because her car is in the car park and yet she's not here. She never goes anywhere without the car. So I don't know where she is. Um, but he turned up in a car with a friend, the friend's car, and then another friend turned up in their car and they came in, took a few things like his music gear, they took the telly and then they went. So it wasn't like a proper move, they just took a few things and went and it was really early this morning so I didn't have a chance to get out there and, um, and ask and I felt with friends around and everything so I don't know what's going on he's definitely moving out but whether it's because they're both moving out or just he's moving out I don't know no sign of her at all it's just really weird so whether it is a split up I don't know um, anyway so that's that update so I'm just doing, it's early morning actually, it's about 8 o'clock. So I'm just doing my spreadsheets, updating money that's come in overnight. I got paid for one of my cleaning jobs, so I'm just moving money around and making sure everything goes into the right savings account so it earns some money. And that's it really. Average, it's Friday morning, so yeah. I decided to take my trainers out on their maiden voyage this morning. And I think we were quite successful. They definitely feel more comfortable. Like most of my other shoes have really just hard, um, just hard soles and you can feel the concrete underneath. So the memory, memory foam seems pretty good. So I've got that and I've now ordered a pair of orthopedic gel memory foam inserts for my other shoes and I'm going to give those a go. They've got gels at certain pressure points on your foot so I'm going to give those a go. They were really cheap, they were, they're less than three quid on eBay so I'm going to give those a go and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I've decided to try a different approach to cutting back on some of the food that I eat. I've mentioned before how if I fixate on snacking less buying less rubbish food I just makes me worse um, so that doesn't work 
And what I really want to do is cut down on the worst food products and my sugar intake, um, and especially ultra processed foods. Um, so I've written some ideas here, which I'm just going to read off my phone. Um, so if I want to cut down ultra processed foods, that includes stuff like ice cream, ham, sausages, crisps, mass produced bread, breakfast cereals, biscuits, carbonated drinks, fruit flavoured yogurts, instant soups, and some alcoholic drinks, including whiskey, gin, and rum. Now, some of those things I don't buy anyway, but a lot of them I do. Um, and so I either just cut them out or replace them with other foods, which which will be healthier but more expensive and the key to this is keeping the budget down so ultra processed foods like that are designed to be addictive and that's why you can't stop buying them and that's why you can't stop eating them and I know that's the same for me you get that hit when you eat a chocolate biscuit or you eat a packet of crisps or like me with the pork pies and um, that sort of thing. So I know that it's kind of like a dopamine hit. I know how it works. I understand that retailers need to keep you hooked. They need to keep you addicted because that's how they make their money. So this is my new approach. If I can't learn to change my ways for my health, maybe as a frugal lifestyler, I can change it for my budget. Why do I want to give money to a company that is trying to keep me addicted and slowly kill me? It's one reason why I don't smoke, apart from obviously the health. Why would I pay a company a lot of money to kill me? It's why I don't shop with Amazon, because I don't want to give them my money for their terrible business practices. So... Can I use my frugal and financial mindset as my weapon against buying the wrong food and cutting back? Why would I want to give food retailers my money for food that is going to make me sick long term? And food that I don't need. I might as well just burn like a tenner of my food budget every month. So... I would rather see that money stay in the bank. The problem is that, well, one of the problems is that because I already have a very low food budget, there's less incentive. It's not like I'm trying to cut back on a hundred pound a week food addiction. I spend, I physically eat roughly 20 pounds a month worth of food. And it's not a lot. But don't forget, I also don't have an enormous incoming uh, amount of money. So although I am already, I already know that I am going to earn more than I spend this year, great, wouldn't it be nice to have a little bit more? So I'm trying to focus on, think about food companies as the bad guys. They're like the tobacco companies. They're bad. They're like gambling. They're bad. And so part of my rationale is... Why should I give these companies my money so that they can pay their CEOs enormous pay rises and make enormous profits whilst people struggle? So let's see if that works. Because it would be nice to get that those numbers down on the food budget and then that's more money in the bank. If I could save that money, maybe I could get myself a new pair of walking boots with that. Or, I don't know, whatever else it is, maybe create a savings goal. As if I don't already have loads of savings goals. But I kind of feel that maybe that is a better way to go forward than just considering my health. Because when it comes to things like this, you always think it will happen to somebody else. And you think you're okay, and you're ticking along... And it's not until you have a health crisis that you suddenly change your ways. And I don't want to get to that stage. But if I can use my finances and 
not wanting to give my money to greedy retailers as my inspiration. Maybe that will do the job. And then once I get into a habit of eating less and eating better, I can perpetuate that. So I've done this before where I've cut back and I've eaten more healthily. And the more you do it, the more used to it you get. The thing is, because these ultra-processed and these processed foods are designed to be addictive, you have to wean yourself off them. It's the same as smoking, it's the same as drinking, it's the same as taking drugs. You have to wean yourself off of it. Sugar is an addiction. Um, a lot of the, the things that they put into food, so you've got your fats and your saturates, and all those things, all the, like those processed carbohydrates, they click in your brain. And that's how they keep you hooked. And I know that there are lots of very underhand methods they're using at the moment to keep their profit margins up, but keep producing the food. So they're downgrading the ingredients that they put into the food. They're cutting back a bit on how much meat goes into a product and upping the flavouring that goes into it. If we all ate food that had no no preservatives and no fake flavours and no salt and no sugar food would taste really bland because our taste buds and the way our brains work have been hardwired to only want to eat the processed rubbish and when you clean eat or whatever else it is that you do I've not done it you start to remove the addiction from your brain from your body and it's the dopamine hit that you're getting when you bite into a KFC or a McDonald's. But it's a very short-lived, it's designed to be a very short-lived hit. So that, you know, an hour later you want it again. And when they add on top the convenience that comes with it, it's very hard to resist. And you can understand why people get hooked. Now, I've cut down a lot. And there are lots of things related to food that I don't do. I never buy takeaways. I don't buy junk food. I don't buy sweets and fizzy drinks. Um, those are things that I don't need. So I know that I can do it. And I just need to take that next step and stop going to certain places in the supermarket and stop buying certain products so that I can reduce the food that I'm buying. But I'm not starving. I mean, I have more than enough food. But there's also that dopamine hit that you get from getting a bargain. So I've got to stop thinking of it as, oh, look at the money I saved by buying this pack of bagels for 48p, and think of it more as, I didn't spend 48p. So that's how I'm going to work on this. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep at it. Uh, a tactic will work. I've got to trick my brain and, and work on it psych psychologically. Because it's an addiction, I need to find the thing that encourages me to say I don't need this anymore so I'm going to work on that so join me if you wish if you're looking for ideas for how you can overcome your maybe your food addiction or or, or whatever else it is to do with your diet and your food budget maybe this is a way forward maybe that's the only inspiration you need is seeing the money the numbers go up in the bank maybe you take all that money that you have saved on the food each week or each month and you put it into a savings pot and you can get yourself something nice maybe you put it towards a holiday or maybe a new pair of trainers I don't know whatever else it is that you think that you would like to reward yourself with for stopping this cycle of um, eating badly so that's my um, that's my thought for the day
I'll take myself out for a walk. Bit of greenery. Checking out what's going on with nature. I've noticed that the elderflower bushes are just starting to come into bloom. And one of the things I love to make is elderflower champagne, which I've made for a few years now. So when that happens, I will do you a ride along and you can see how I make elderflower champagne, because you might find that good fun. In fact, looks like there's a bush just next to me that looks like it's already fully flowered. It's not, it's something else entirely different. From a distance it definitely looked like elderflowers. This morning I woke up at quarter past six. And normally I drift back to sleep, but not today. Uh, so it's now half seven, I've been up about half an hour. I found a huge house spider in my bath this morning. <laughs> so I put him out the window. It's an exciting start to the day, isn't it? It is absolutely stunning here again today. I think it's going to be something like 25 degrees today. Um, so I'm going to get out early and do the cleaning because the building is like one giant greenhouse. So when I was in there on Wednesday evening, it was 27 and a half degrees. It was just so hot. So I think I'm probably going to get ready and go over there about eight, half eight. Um, because it's going to be a lot cooler right now. And that'll be better. The weather is going to break tomorrow, apparently. Um, and it's just going to rain, 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 rain and rain. So we'll see. We'll see how much of that materialises. It's not going to be desperately cold, but it's only going to be 18. Which is going to be a big difference, I think, compared to the, the 25, the 23 to 25 we've been having the last few days. But it's been a glorious May so far. Um, I've managed to get all my broad beans out and my runner beans out and I've discovered that slugs love runner beans. It's weird, the first year I did runner beans they did really really well and everything was fine. Last year they got decimated by the slugs. This year literally the first night and I was seeing nibbles in the morning. So I've just sprinkled a little bit of salt around the bottoms of them to try and keep the slugs at bay until the plants are big enough to fend for themselves but uh, and the other thing is that the um, the aphids have moved in on my purple sprouting broccoli so that's going to be dead soon because it's absolutely coated and they also love runner beans but they also don't like broad beans so I've discovered that broad beans seem to be impervious to slugs and aphids so I've got an even number of broad beans and um, runner beans so I'm hoping that at least a couple of the runner beans survive the deluge of bugs trying to kill them but if not then at least I have the broad beans and they're all looking pretty good I've got my sweet peas which I think are going to be ready to go out really soon but I'm also worried about them also being decimated by slugs because I seem to remember them being I seem to remember my mum's ones being absolutely destroyed by them like when I planted them last year but I need to get these out I should probably get them out today while the weather's good to give them at least 24 hours to settle in before the rain comes um, what else um, tomatoes are doing well the cherry ones not so good they've always been a bit hit and miss but I have these the Elise the Ailsa variety and they're doing well um, a few of them didn't come up so I planted again and now I've got some of these tubes that have two and three now growing because the seeds were clearly just delayed. So I'm going to split those between um, me and my mum and dad. I always give them three plants a year because they've got one pot that they dedicate to tomatoes. And they can't grow stuff but they like to have stuff. 
so they're going to be big full size plants but they're heavy croppers so if none of my cherry tomatoes survive I'll have, have all the regular size ones and then hopefully they'll survive um, still got pea plants, the pea plants are doing quite well Still, I've kept those indoors because they also they got decimated by white fly last year so I'm hanging on to them indoors as long as possible because I want them to have the, the strength to survive whatever gets thrown at them um, even in here they've been nibbled at I think there must be a slug hiding in the soil somewhere because the soil I think came from outdoors and uh, some of the bottom leaves had a nibble I did find a slug and I threw it out so I think it's probably gone now but um, so I'm going to hang on to those for a bit they're in their final pot already and I think that's it at the moment um, I'm trying to grow peppers I think one of them might one of them might have sprouted I'm not sure new purple sprouting broccoli and oh, there's another see I've got two tomatoes that have come up with a purple sprouting broccoli all over the place this year <laughs> I might have to separate those out when they get big enough um, yes yeah, so I have quite a lot going on here so I have one, two, three, four, five purple sprouting broccoli, which seem to have sprouted successfully. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven full-sized tomato plants. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the uh, cherry tomatoes, and I'm not sure how we're going to get on with those. We'll see how we get on. So yeah, stuff is happening. Um, stay with me. Not really organised this morning. <sighs> and it's getting really warm. I'm in my dressing gown, but it's um, it's already really warm. I think it's already about 16 degrees. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to get cracking and get on and do a clean this morning before the weather gets too warm, and then I can just enjoy the day. Don't have any plans for this weekend apart from oops apart from just doing the cleaning and I will go over to Morrison's tomorrow and only buy healthy stuff, I promise or stuff that isn't the ultra process which I'm trying to cut back on um, yeah I feel like my videos have got really boring I've been putting in a lot of stuff to do with like financial stuff because I've had a lot of that going on at the moment um, and I've been you know reassessing all my finances this year and certain things on my mind about am I doing the right thing and that sort of thing and tips that I have so I've added a bunch of that because I know that some of you find that really useful and that's about it now now I've come back from my car camping I feel like everything's gone really flat <laughs> and I was only away for about 40 hours um, I don't really have anything else coming up I've got one cinema trip that I want to do I've got one day trip out into the country that I want to do, but now that the rain's really coming in, I'm going to see, it's all going to be based on how wet it is. So we'll see, we'll see how we get on. Now I've got my new trainers, and I've tested them out a few times now, and they're really comfortable. I'm really pleased with those, so I'm pleased I ordered those extra orthopaedic um, inserts, because once I get those, and I can move those between shoe pairs, I might find going out and walking around a lot more easier. Because that's the only problem at the moment. If I go out like for a four days walking or something, I end up in quite a lot of pain in my feet, and I've got to sort that out. And I think a lot of it is just a mixture of having a standing desk and being on my feet all day, but also just my age, you know, and my feet not being really up to walking long distances anymore like they used to be. So I'm hoping that those new inserts which have, you know, extra gel cushions on certain pressure points on the foot and the pressure points are where I need them will actually really help. So I'm going to test those out when they arrive next week. I'm going to pop them into my walking boots. This is the second set of walking boots because I think those ones that I've been gluing together have finally bitten the dust. But I have another pair that are still very intact. Um, but I haven't worn as much because I didn't like them as much, they weren't as comfortable. But maybe with the inserts they'll be better. And I'm going to get out and try that and if that works, 
and walking is just going to be easy generally. A lot of the time I walk around in, in flat shoes, so shoes like Converse, stuff like that, and they have no contours on, on their, their soles at all. It's just flat. It's like walking on concrete. Um, and I think that having inserts in those would be really good. So if the inserts work, I might get a couple more pairs because they were really cheap and just have them in the different shoes that I regularly wear. Anyway, so <laughs> when I put a bit of a tangent, I was just going to say, hey, I got up really early this morning and I found a house spider. And instead I ended up talking, as usual, about utter crap. Um, right, I'm going to go and get organised. Um, I am going to get out and do my clean early because this weather is already warming up quite fast. So, uh, fun times!